had to use a sprinkler last night. Yeah. Brown patches. At that point, absolutely. Yeah. All right, right now we're talking about how the city of Erie is bolstering its quality of life ticketing program, trying to crack down on deadbeat property owners. Quality of life tickets will now carry a $100 fine, a big jump from the previous $25 penalty. Erie's code enforcement leaders say the fines aren't meant to punish people who need help. They're meant to hold property owners accountable. Officials say they try to work with people when they notice a violation. The first thing they do is knock on the door, talk with the homeowner, try to figure out if there's resources they need to address the problem. But there are people who just choose to ignore that anyway, and at least now the fine has sufficient teeth to make it worth pursuing. Considerably south of here, protesters gathered at Atlanta's City Hall ahead of a vote Monday night on whether to allocate an extra $30 million to a controversial Atlanta public safety training center that's been dubbed Cop City by critics. Yeah, there were hundreds of speakers that signed up to comment ahead of the Atlanta City Council vote on whether or not to spend an additional $30 million on a training center, which was originally priced at around $90 million. This plan is opposed by a combination of climate activists looking to protect Atlanta's forests and civil rights activists who say the money could be better spent elsewhere. Despite the protest, and you can see how packed it was there, Atlanta's council approved the plans for the center last night. And speakers going through 3 o'clock in the morning there. There were so many people lined up to talk. Trying to give everybody a voice. Yep. Yeah. All right, this summer marks 20 years since one of the most infamous criminal cases in Erie County history, the so-called pizza bomber case where delivery driver Brian Wells was killed as part of a bizarre bank robbery plot. The incident is now being brought to life in a stage play with a second night of tryouts tonight. Local writer, producer, and director David Durst created the production. He hopes the play will increase awareness of mental illness, saying he'll donate part of the proceeds. Yeah, tonight's auditions are at 7 o'clock at the Station Dinner Theater off Peach Street. Performances will be held then at the Granite Ridge Complex, Alex Clemente Theater in Northeast, and that will be in August. All right, now to the story of how a family felt. They were being watched, and they were, but by a panther. I want to show you some video out of this peeking panther. This was uh, through a sliding glass door of a Florida home. Now, most people in the state will never see a Florida panther. Experts say there's only about 200 left wild. Yeah, there's about 25 on the ice in the Stanley Cup final, too. I think those are different <laughs> Florida panthers, yep, though. The family that lives at home moved there about a month ago. An expert at Florida Gulf Coast University says panthers don't pose much of a threat to humans, but they could absolutely pose a threat to pets, and nobody really wants a panther hanging out outside their house. Not the lawn ornament you're looking for. No, no, you're on the couch, you look to the side, and oops. There's the panther. Yep, hello. All right, we have that, of course, QR code at the bottom of the screen here. If you take your smartphone and you take a snapshot of that, it'll take you to our website where all the stories we're talking about this half hour will be. Also ahead tonight.